Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Don Sowers and I am the Manager of Disaster Volunteer Services for Volunteer Tennessee. September 11th is the National Day of Service and Remembrance. That tragic day back in 2001 along with the recent hurricanes in Florida, wildfires in Hawaii as we just heard about, and disasters in Tennessee point out the importance of preparedness. Each year September is National Preparedness Month and it is an opportunity to remind us to prepare for disasters or emergencies that could happen to anyone at any time. For today's topics, you can see Candace has covered the introductions and told us about Volunteer Tennessee, and Michael graciously shared that he is what he is doing for the Maui wildfires uh, when he described the AmeriCorps Disaster Response Teams and the AmeriCorps Disaster Services Unit. In my portion of today's webinar, I'll provide you with an overview of some of the emergency preparedness tips about disaster opportunities, that's volunteering opportunities, how to personally prepare, understanding hazards and risks, planning for disasters, and additional online training opportunities. We're going to be going through these slides pretty quickly today, so we are going to share a link to the PDF copy of this PowerPoint as well. You'll be able to access that in the chat and also on our Disaster Services page on the Volunteer Tennessee website. That way, in the future, you will have easy access to the dozens of internet links in these slides about preparedness. Finally, we're asking if you have any questions during our presentation, please post them in the chat and we will try to get to each of them at the end of our presentation. Thanks. And now let's get started. In a major disaster, Volunteer Tennessee staff responds to Tennessee Emergency Management Agency's Emergency Operations Center. In that EOC, we communicate with local government and other organizations to identify the needs and help coordinate volunteer and donation efforts. And one of our jobs in the EOC is to share response and recovery opportunities with recognized disaster volunteer organizations. Also, when requested by local officials, we can help facilitate the establishment of volunteer and donation reception centers at disaster locations. And on an ongoing basis, during what are often called the Blue Sky Days, wish we had more of those, we provide support to locally led community emergency response teams. We will talk a bit more about CERT programs a little bit later on in our presentation. So personal disaster volunteer opportunities, um, you know, of course, helping our immediate neighbors in need is what we all do as Americans. But we encourage you to never just self-deploy or worse, show up and be a looky-loo at a major disaster scene. Only respond if you're already trained in coming with a group who is part of an authorized volunteer organization that normally responds to disasters. Please don't self-deploy because that means that you've shown up at the location and government officials have not called for you to be there. And quite frankly, it's something where you'll get in the way. So instead, look for volunteer opportunities on the Internet. And if you wish to make a donation, please make a monetary donation and never send old clothing or discarded toys. And if you think you may want to volunteer sometime in the future at a disaster location, please first pre-affiliate with a recognized disaster response organization. That means you get a hold of them long before disaster, um, take their training, and then be available possibly when there is a disaster. And you can find many more uh, volunteer opportunities in First Lady Maria Lee's Tennessee Serves website and through the links on the men that are mentioned on these slides. When you are ready to volunteer, please contact any of the member organizations in Tennessee Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters. They are referred to as Tennessee VOAD. They include the American Red Cross, United Way, Civil Air Patrol, faith-based groups, and nearly 100 other organizations in Tennessee. And of course, please see the link to the flyer, When Disaster Strikes, How to Donate or Volunteer Successfully for more information. So, are you personally prepared for a disaster? First of all, we need to understand the risk and hazards in Tennessee. These TEMA, FEMA, and USGS websites have a ton of information about the threats and hazards we may face. Also, the United States Geological Survey, the USGS, provides science about the natural hazards that threaten Tennesseans' lives and livelihoods. Please check out these links as they will provide you with flood maps, fact sheets, and many preparedness resources. 
If you see that tornado coming, will you be prepared? We often do not have much advance warning if a tornado is about to strike our neighborhood. Please consider clicking on the link, How to Prepare for a Tornado, and the links on the following slides to get prepared. Unfortunately, as we know, tornadoes can happen pretty much anywhere and at any time of the day or night. Please think about what you would do ahead of time. Which room would you go to in your home or workplace if a tornado were coming? In looking at this image of a house on the slide, I would probably pick one of those rooms with the green check mark in the lowest interior space or room. And here's a suggestion. Today or tomorrow, please take a minute to walk down the hallway and actually go into that shelter space. Is there going to be enough room for everyone? Where exactly would you stand or sit to write it out? And are there a flashlight, food, water, chairs, and other items if you were stuck in there for a while? Again, please click on the links on each of our slides to learn more about tornadoes and other hazards. We should also get prepared for severe weather and its aftermath. Not all insurance policies are the same. Make sure to review your own policy annually to remind yourself of your coverage. And typical homeowners policies do not include flood insurance. Please make updates to your insurance based upon new purchases, increases in property values, or the cost to rebuild or replace items. And shockingly, flood-related drownings kill more than 50 people each year. So do not ever cross a flooded roadway. Turn around and don't drown. We should also get prepared for severe weather and its aftermath. Not all insurance policies are the same. Make sure to review your own policy annually to remind yourself of your coverage. And typical homeowners policies do not include flood insurance. Please make updates to your insurance based upon new purchases, increases in property values, or the cost to rebuild or replace items. And shockingly, flood-related drownings kill more than 50 people each year. So do not ever cross a flooded roadway. Turn around and don't drown. There is one thing you can purchase that will really help you survive, and that is a NOAA weather radio. These radios are not just to hear about the weather. They also include other warnings which could save your life. And have one on each floor of your home or workplace so you will never miss a warning. So if that severe weather or earthquake hits, making sure your cell phone is fully charged is a must. Have a charger handy and some backup batteries. And in this FEMA power outage tips link, there is more information you can use to make your phone last longer. You may also want to sign up for some great weather alert apps and training. There will be several National Weather Service weather safety basics classes coming this fall. So please see the link at the bottom of this slide for more information. Please get the Ready TN app for Tennessee specific information and always sign up for any local government emergency alerts. And there is a FEMA mobile app for your phone as well that will provide a lot of weather and disaster related information. Are you prepared for an earthquake? If the big one hits, what will you do? During an earthquake, drop to the floor, cover, get under something, and hold on. When you feel an earthquake, immediately get under something stable like this table. Pull your loved ones close and be aware that aftershocks can happen in a short period of time after the earthquake or even up to days after an earthquake. Being inside and under something sturdy is really the best place to be during an earthquake, but please do not run outside. If you do, falling bricks, glass, or other debris could seriously hurt you. And unless the building is actually collapsing, it's really best to stay indoors. So you may ask yourself, are there many earthquakes in Tennessee? Well, the answer is yes. 
Small earthquakes occur nearly every day, and major earthquake, though rare, could affect all Tennesseans. As you can see on the map, we are surrounded by three large seismic zones. Also, scientists estimate there's up to a 40% probability of a magnitude 6.0 or larger earthquake, which is a very strong earthquake, occurring in the New Madrid seismic zone within a 50-year period. Such an earthquake could hit the Mississippi Valley and Tennessee at any time, causing massive damage. Unfortunately, earthquakes cannot be predicted. However, there are steps we can all take to prepare, like attaching bookcases and water heaters to the wall. So please check out the link to 7 Steps to Earthquake Safety, which can help us all minimize the impact of earthquakes. No one is ever prepared to see a fire like that in their home, but you can take steps to minimize the threat and possibly put out the fire before it gets that big. You can be safer if you live in a fire-prone area and prevent wildfires with some simple tips. You should clear brush or tall grasses at least 100 to 200 feet from your home. Use your grill outside and keep it 10 feet away from anything that can easily burn. Avoid activities with open flames. Of course, property discard cigarettes, and please do not park on tall, dry grass. That frequently starts fires. <whistles> Tragically, in the United States, home fires claim seven lives every single day. But by having working smoke alarms, that could cut the risk of death by half. However, if you cannot currently afford to buy a smoke alarm, request an appointment for a free alarm and installation. You'll see the link is on there right below that uh, picture or image of a smoke alarm. And remember to change the batteries in them twice a year. Also, I'd like to suggest you go check all your smoke alarms right after this presentation to see if they are working. But if you do not know how to do that, you can check out the many videos on YouTube for your brand of smoke alarm. If there's a fire, do you have an easily accessible fire extinguisher? And is it fully charged? Do you even know how to use it? You might want to try to remember P-A-S-S. -S. Pull the round pin in the handle, aim at the base of the flames, squeeze the trigger, and sweep back and forth. If you would like to learn more about what to do after a disaster to help yourself and your neighbors, please consider taking free Community Emergency Response Team training to be better prepared for emergencies. This free 20-hour CERT course will help prepare you for the hazards that threaten our communities. You may ask, what is CERT training? Well, CERT programs are usually sponsored by a local government agency or community organization. The CERT classes teach us how to protect our family and neighbors. You can learn how to put out small fires, how to help someone who's injured, practice turning off a gas meter or propane tank, and many more practical tips to keep you and your loved ones safe. Also, Volunteer Tennessee can help you if you wish to start a CERT program for your agency, program, or organization. We're not going to have time to watch this today, but later on you can see this video and learn more about CERT programs. As we mentioned, September is National Preparedness Month, and that includes personal preparedness. We will now share some of the ways you can learn to prepare. You can get ready now by making a plan and building an emergency kit. Creating a plan should start with talking about preparedness with your family, friends, and co-workers. And we plan so everyone knows what to do if a disaster strikes. Please check out this FEMA webpage, How to Make a Plan to Help You Get Started. During your planning, you should talk with your family about emergencies that are most likely to happen where you live and how you will respond. Decide what each family member will do when an emergency happens. Of course, communication is key in times of crisis. So make sure your family also has an emergency communication plan in place. Basically, what that'll be is putting down on pieces of paper the information you want to share, like contact information, meeting points, and way to stay connected. Practice your plan frequently, especially with children. And remember, all safety starts with having a plan. 
We need to include everyone in your planning and keep those with disabilities safe during and after an emergency. And here are some tips. Place a contact list of your support network on their phone. Uh, make sure they have their medical alert tags or bracelets. And add medical information to their electronic devices. This is especially helpful if you are not with them if they happen to get injured. Uh, someone can look on that and see your contact information and also what to do in case of an emergency. We just spoke about including everyone. We should also recognize older adults face greater risks in emergencies and disasters. Consider checking in with older neighbors to see how you can help them before and after a disaster and check out the Take Control and 123 website that we have listed on here for even more suggestions. People with disabilities or special needs may require help when evacuating. Make sure that at least one person in your support network has an extra key to their home, know where they keep their medical or emergency supplies and contact information for their medical providers. Consider taking training about using their medical equipment and how to administer their medications long before a disaster. And finally, please check out the link to the FEMA Preparing for Disaster brochure for more suggestions. Finally, for your planning, if a disaster strikes, your family may not be together. So planning for the kids, of course, is important. Know how you'll contact one another and reconnect if you're separated. Establish a family meeting place today that's familiar and easy to find in the future. And if you happen to be a teacher, please see the link on the slide with the classroom material for grades 1 through 12. And now what can be a fun project? In addition to the NOAA weather radio, having a ready kit or sometimes called a go kit with you is important to have before a disaster strikes. The supplies you set aside in your kit should last all the members of your family or co-workers for several days. You will want to have a personal 72-hour go kit and a go kit for your vehicle. Check out these links for more info. Well, I'm excited. The weather this week could be beautiful again, but next week it may be hot. So during heat events, the temperature in your car could be deadly. Never leave people or pets inside of a parked vehicle or in direct sunlight. Stay cool and hydrated. Remember to take breaks throughout the day. And you see that case of water on there. That's to remind you to keep extra bottles of water in your car. You can rotate them out every six months or so just to make sure they stay fresh. But it's very important to have that with you, especially if you got stuck somewhere. Please be sure to have a first aid kit for your home and vehicle, and do not forget to pack any personal items and a small supply of your prescription medications just in case. Of course, if there were a disaster or devastating fire in your home or workplace, you will definitely want to have online backups or extra copies of your important documents kept somewhere safe. Consider asking a relative or a trusted friend to keep those copies for you. And here's a link to an emergency financial first aid kit to help you pull all that information together. And let's not forget to prepare for our pets. Be sure to include water, pet food, their medicines, and a collar with an ID tag or have them chipped. Also, just in case you and your pet get separated, consider having a previous photo handing of you with your pet so you can show that photo to officials and be reunited. When you think about preparedness and making your supply kits, please do not become overwhelmed. Simply click on these preparedness links and take steps once a month to build your emergency supply kit over time. Finally, for the last topic of this presentation, here are a few more slides with information about courses you can take to prepare. You Are the Help Until Help Arrives is a free online training course that teaches you how to treat someone who's been injured, possibly saving their life by doing the five most essential actions. You call 911 as soon as possible, move them away from whatever danger there is, stop the bleeding, of course, position them properly, and providing warmth and comfort until others arrive to help. The Stop the Bleed course teaches you how to stop bleeding, and it uh, goes over things like applying dressings, applying pressure, and how to apply a tourniquet. 
And it happens that uh, Hands On Nashville is going to be offering this Stop the Bleed uh, training on September 27th at 5.30 p.m. Seats are limited, but if you click on that hyperlink on the uh, slide and use the password Super Volunteer, which everyone at Hands On Nashville is wonderful uh, and super, uh, you can uh, sign up for that course as well. Unfortunately, today we may be faced with situations that involved active shooters. Uh, this targeted violence is something that's really hard to prepare for, but you can take an active shooter training course. And basically what it's going to teach you to do is to run, hide, and fight if you must. Now, there's different ways of taking this course. Uh, you can take uh, a look at one of these online links that are listed here in this slide. And then on the next slide, you'll see that there's a video that is excellent that gives you an overview of what to do in the oh unfortunate situation you may find yourself in someday if you do have to uh, confront an active shooter. And like you can see with that image running across the screen, the most important thing you can do is run. If there is an active shooter, get out of the area. Just head the opposite direction. Uh, run, hide, or fight. Uh, if you do leave the building and law enforcement is there, be sure to follow their commands. Uh, keep your hands up in the air. Uh, don't become argumentative and just uh, do what law enforcement tells you to do to uh, protect you. Well, you may be wondering what we can do to help prevent violence in our communities. Well, you can anonymously report suspicious activities and criminal behaviors. Uh, call 911. Um, if you see any kind of assault taking place or bragging about an upcoming or planned attack or physical harm to others or violence or planned violence, such as domestic violent extremism, be sure to report that to local authorities and maybe you can stop something before it gets worse. So in preventing uh, domestic violent extremism in our communities, you may wonder, well, what exactly does that refer to? It's basically a, a very significant threat uh, here in the United States when you have, oh, you've heard of them before called lone wolf or lone offenders or small cells of individuals who, you know, may be motivated by foreign interests or grievances that they have here within the United States. And they take actions like we saw at the Murrah building in 1995 in Oklahoma City. Uh, that was just so tragic and so devastating. So if you do suspect seeing something that's going on, uh, you know, please do pick up that phone, make a call. Uh, and in fact, there's an app I'm going to talk about in a moment that you can use to anonymously report uh, threats in our schools and in our communities. So here's that additional information I was speaking about, uh, and it's available at these websites. If you see something, say something. Uh, a program that started originally out of uh, New York City. Uh, you know, it's as simple as calling 911. Uh, so click on these links to find out more information. To find out more about emergency situations you may find yourself in and the If You See Something, Say Something campaign, you can go to these websites to review them for uh, additional information and uh, learn more about uh, domestic violent, violent extremism resources. And it also helps you recognize the threats of violence. And here is that Safe Tennessee app that I mentioned for preventing violence in our communities and schools. It's a, a wonderful way to stop uh, potential threats uh, and to access additional resources. And you should consider uh, you know, sharing with your friends, neighbors, family members, what have you. Uh, the 988 uh, Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, it's, it's uh, pr pretty new. Uh, it's, it's a way for you to get confidential support for people in uh, distress uh, prevention and uh, crisis uh, who may be uh, contemplating something uh, as bad as, uh, you know, taking their own lives or the lives of another. So even though this was a course about personal preparedness, I want to share one additional link. This is to the Open Online Preparedness course that helps organizations basically identify risks and develop an emergency operations plans and, you know, develop a culture within your organization of what to do in the event of a disaster. So please consider clicking on this link. It's an excellent training session uh, for you for not only business continuity purposes, but to take care of the coworkers and friends that uh, you have there in the workplace. There are also some previous FEMA webinars that deal with preparedness that are absolutely excellent. Uh, FEMA Region 2 put these together uh, in the last few years, and you can click on these uh, links that are uh, attached to this slide uh, to see those webinars, and I highly recommend them. 
So remember to visit tima.gov and ready.gov. Both of those websites have uh, preparedness information. Uh, they have templates for family communication plans and checklists that you can use to become prepared. Uh, also, this information is available in Spanish and other languages, as you can see on the link on this slide. Well, we're about to get to your questions in the chat, but uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to leave this slide up that has my contact information if you uh, want any additional information at all, or if I can be helpful in any way, especially if you'd like to start a CERT program or anything of that nature, or have any questions that we don't address today, uh, please do follow up at my email at donsowers at tn.gov or give me a holler. Best way to reach me is on my cell. All right, with that, I'm going to toss it back to Candace. Thanks.